John A. Bush, yeah. Andre Kibrick, and Dr. Marina. That's <laughs> quite <laughs> And these two have been studying the Nilchik Russians since 1997. And as Bobby said, it was a labor of love. They, they were uh, working in interior Alaska on an Athabascan language. But uh, some contacts were made and they were willing to come down here and help us preserve the language. I know there's different attitudes about preserving the language. But most of us in this room, I think, have a good positive feeling about the Russian and think it's a good thing to save it for future generations. And that's, that's how I feel. And uh, the negative feelings come from some terrible things that happened to people, the prejudice and so forth uh, in the past. And that's, that's very unfortunate. And they have been studying uh, which words are real Russian words. And most of, well, I don't want to take your speech, but <laughs> they have found out that most of Manilchik Russian is just exactly the same as Moscow Russian. There's just a few words that are different. And the words that are different, they can tell you where they came from. So that's a lot of fun. Slime words? Slime words? Um, there are some slang ones, but what we I have often... The same <laughs> what we often thought was slang or Aleut word or something often is Russian. Uh, but there are some words that are borrowed from Danina and Aleut so forth. So, our friend Andre and Mira and Dr. Marina documenting this. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Wayne, for this introduction. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming. Uh, we'll tell a little bit about uh, our study of this variety of the Russian language that is uh, survived in this part of Alaska. Oh, it's a bit. Uh, yeah, it will be better like this. Uh, uh, the first person, I think, who did uh, linguistic research of the Nemilchik Russian dialect was the Irish linguist from Ireland, Connor Daly, who was a student of the uh, University of California at Berkeley at the time. And in, during the 1980s, he came here a few times. Maybe some of you met him. I I'm not sure. But he did some important uh, preliminary work. And then uh, in 1997, uh, Mira got in touch with Wayne and Bobby, and uh, they helped us to organize our first visit here. Uh, uh, and uh, here you see a list of the speakers of Ninilchik Russian who we mostly worked with. We all also worked with a few others, but to a lesser extent, uh, uh, we were working a lot at the house of Harry Lehman, where it was him, together with Louis Kwasnikov, <clears throat> giving us many, many important, much, much of important information. And uh, okay. Uh, and uh, then uh, there was kind of interruption in this work. We were, uh, as probably everybody, we had many different, di different commitments and obligations. In our life, we, could, we produced a now dictionary for the Nilchik Russian in 97, which wasn't published then. And uh, uh, later on, Wayne Lehman started working very intensely on the Nilchik Russian. I think beginning, particularly the beginning from 2008, maybe, about, about that time. And, uh, Wayne started sending us additional information about the Nilchik Russian and uh, he was urging us very strongly to come back to this work and uh, we, we certainly realized that we should do that but we were always busy so it took us a few years to manage to, to come here again. And there was also one other Russian linguist, Evgeny Golovkov, who visited here in, I think in 2009 and 
maybe some, he meant some work with some of you. Okay. So there, there are just a few pictures from our 1997 stay. You see, Arnie is there. Thanks for coming, Arnie. <laughs> and uh, you see Louis and Harry on the right and left side of the picture. And us, a bit younger than now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Exactly 15 years. Uh, Harry is showing something uh, to Mira, who is really attentive to, 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 his, to his talk. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a, uh, a visit we had in one of the Jakinski houses, and uh, we look forward to, we hope to have a chance to see George during this stage. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this is um, one of our favorite pictures uh, with Nick Lehman. Uh, we are standing uh, just next to his house. That's where we are staying right now, together with Wayne. And uh, it's Mira and two of our daughters, Anna and Lily, who were with us back then. And I think it's a nice picture. It, we, you can even see the church in the back. Uh, yeah, one, uh, one more picture. It's Lila, our youngest daughter, with the whole of the uh, historic Ninilchik village in the background. As it was in '97. <laughs> uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, okay, now about the language itself. <coughs> every language, uh, or at least every big language uh, spoken by thousands, uh, even millions of people, has uh, different dialects or varieties. And uh, during our study here, we found out that Ninilchik Russian is one of the numerous variants or dialects of Russian. Of course, Russia is a, bi a big country. It has uh, many parts and territories, and there is a huge dialect diversity. Like people from uh, the northern part of European Russia, around a uh, city like Archangel, uh, they speak very dis different from people in the Volga region, and so on and so forth. And uh, these varieties fairly well known, uh, but uh, until recently it wasn't really understood that Alaska has its own variety of Russian and Ninilchik is the location where this variety has been preserved uh, the longest. There were other places where um, Alaskan Russian was also spoken, such as Kodiak and uh, maybe a few other people, places like Russian mission on the Yukon and maybe Pribilov Islands. We still need to find, exact, find out that exactly, but Ninilchik is clearly the place that was pretty much isolated during the early part of the 20th century. And due to that fact, Ninilchik Russian were kept being transferred from one generation to another longer than, for example, in Kodia. Uh, so this dialect has its own sound system. It's uh, very close to standard Russian or Moscow Russian, if you want. But it, it has some differences. It has a very well preserved vocabulary, uh, words. It has some special features in its grammar. Mostly, again, mostly like uh, mainstream Russian, but with some differences. And it's uh, apparently a variety of Russian uh, that can be attributed to a certain period of time in certain territory. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, so, um, uh, here at this point I would like to emphasize that uh, sometimes there is an idea, and th th this idea uh, has been uh, salient uh, in the United States with respect to English too, that uh, some varieties of language may be somehow better or more correct than others. And we as linguists, we take a completely different perspective. We believe that every <coughs> variety of a language has its own value. It's very important uh, to document it, especially if it's an endangered variety that might may disappear. And uh, we don't really think about that in terms of better or 
or, or more correct varieties or wrong varieties. So, uh, and, and this applies in this case too. Uh, Minochic Russian has a particularly great value because it was evolving for a few decades beginning from the uh, 19, 1860s when Russia was uh, Alaska was uh, transferred from Russia to the United States till uh, maybe 1930s when it was uh, developing without um, any contact with mainstream Russian but also without too much influence from English. So it, it was it is really peculiar situation here. And it, it has kept many features of the 19th century Russian that we know uh, sometimes from uh, fiction, from the literature, uh, or from the great Russian writers of the 19th century. And it's kind of endearing to us to hear these words that are not used in Russia anymore, but they have been kept here in, in the vernacular. Okay? It will give you some examples in a few minutes. So back in 97, we collected uh, uh, nouns, uh, about 1,000, over 1,000 nouns. I think now, uh, with the help of Wayne, it's up to 1,500 maybe. Uh, and we, we did some calculations what these nouns are like compared to mainstream Russian. By the way, is the term mainstream Russian does it sound all right? Is, that, is it clear? Okay. Uh, well, that's that's what kind of Russian that you would be taught in an American university if you attended a class. So that's what we mean by that. We, you could also call it Moscow Russian, maybe. So there are many, uh, almost 80% of uh, Minilchik nouns are just the same is, as in, is in mainstream Russian. Words such as sakhar, for sugar, agarot, for garden, butilka, for bottle. How do you say sugar? Uh, sakhar. In Yupik. Yes. Sakhalak. Milijak and Daniel. Salt and pepper. Milijak, that's pepper. Uh, okay, uh, we found about 4% of uh, Ninilchik words coming from Russian dialects, primarily Siberian dialects, because people who came here, they were residents of Siberia, or at least spent some time in the eastern part of Russia. So they br brought these words from there. Yeah, and Moscow Russian wouldn't have those words. And people in Moscow wouldn't know what Tuska means. And Tuska is a backpack. And Laka, Laka is snowshoe. Uh, that's this kind of dialect words. Uh, there are also a bunch of words that uh, are like mainstream Russian, but they have slightly changed their meaning. For example, the war, uh, standard uh, Moscow Russian has the word disna, meaning uh, gums, diosne, gums in your mouth. And, and uh, in the Nilchik, Josna means cheek. So it's close. I guess gums are pretty close to your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> but it has. Uh, oh, okay. Yosna. Yosna. And what is Josna? Josna. Jaws. Okay. okay. Uh, but, but, but again, it's not gums, right? Josna is, is jaws. Okay, thanks for pointing this out. We'll, we'll write it down. <laughs> okay, it's good too that we are getting some information now. Please keep contributing. Okay. I'm writing it down. Uh, <laughs> there are some uh, mainstream Russian words uh, which have just the same meaning but slightly different sound. Like the word for cellar in, in our pronunciation is pogrik. And in Yolchik they say pogrik. So they kind of change the order of letters, so to say. And also we word this night learned this nice word Grimonchik oh, yeah. for harmonica. You know it? Uh, yeah. Say it say how in Moscow we say Garmoshka. Garmoshka. Garmoshka So this is close. Uh, now a few uh, old Russian words that are not being used in, in uh, <laughs> mainstream Russian anymore, 
One is the word lavka. We all know what lavka used to mean, but we don't use lavka in this way anymore. Lavka means store in the Milchik, and that's what, what it meant back in the 19th century in, in Russia. And of course, the famous Milchik word, Nuzhnik. It got replaced in, in uh, mainstream Russian by other words like toilet or, or other words. And, but uh, we still know that this word used to be there, but we just don't. don't Say it too often. And if you use it, they will laugh you <laughs> right out of the place. It happened to me. <laughs> because also, like in English, now you have, you know, ladies' room, restrooms, or I don't know what. So, like, nice words to talk about. So, uh, we also uh, developed some nice words to talk about Mushnik, but yeah. basically it's the same place. <laughs> 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 no, I already wouldn't answer. I was asked them to give me that Mushnik. Give me the Mushnik. Did I they were like this, these ladies. They were all dressed up and they're going, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, but they pointed to it. <laughs> Mira also reminds me another good Nidilchik word that is the same as 19th century Russian, Wishka, second floor. That's uh, what we see sometimes in the classical literature of 19th century, but uh, probably Moscow speakers not right now wouldn't understand what that means. Uh, of course, uh, Nemilchik Russian was <coughs> developing separately from mainstream Russian during the late 19th century and 20th century when many technological innovations came and it had a lot of influence from, from English. And sometimes uh, the words were borrowed from English differently they are from what they are in, in mainstream Russian. Uh, so there are uh, Nemilchik words such as envelope for envelope and the scent for <coughs> scent, it's pretty easy. <coughs> and uh, also nice word, rubber bootsy. <laughs> <laughs> for rubber boots. Yeah, rubber bootsy. Yeah, yeah rubber bootsy. That was my big contribution. <laughs> <laughs> convert. Convert. Ah, so we had convert. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And did you hear envelope too? Or envelope? No. We didn't convert. Use it. We didn't use it. Okay, convert. <laughs> Thanks, we will we'll add it to the dictionary. <coughs> <laughs> well, this is the findings of, the ninth, uh, of our research in 97. That's why we're here, exactly for this purpose to make it, you know, to correct it and to enrich it and to expand it. <laughs> What's your story? Well, you know how old timers are, you know, sometimes they talk about each other. One guy, I'm not going to mention names because they're related to someone here. <laughs> he says, well, he says, you're not so hot you yourself. All you've got is rubber boots. There are some uh, borrowings from the native Alaskan languages too. Uh, this area used to be inhabited or maybe employed by, by the Denina Athabascans people before people of European descent, uh, including Russians, first came here. And there are a few uh, uh, words borrowed from Denina, like the word Kazna for lynx. Uh, it's uh, in Denina, it's something like something like Kazna. Uh, and in Moscow Russian, we use different word. Has anybody heard the word Riz? Riz? For, for links? Yeah. Oh, okay. You have that too. Uh, and uh, uh, it, you think it's just the same, Riz and, and Kazna? I don't know Kazna. Oh, you don't know Kazna. Uh -huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this word Taishi for salted salmon tails. <laughs> That's Bobby's favorite word. Oh, no, first word of the Milchik language. They didn't know it's salted. My grandma used to tie them on the clothesline and the tree. Just dry it? And dry it. No, just, she dried it for just a day or so so we could boil it. 
Okay. The bear got it one time. She had a whole tree like a Christmas tree. Uh -huh. And the bear got it. So the, the, the correct meaning would be just uh, salmon tails? Or? Well, you think honey well, tails. Taishi, taishi yeah, dried at least overnight. Yeah. But, but Taishi no, was, was uh, salted but dried. Okay. Well, we're doing some useful work right here, right, right, right now. <laughs> it's a never ending job. You can always, if you're working on a dictionary, you can never reach full perfection. It tastes really good. I've got a question. I'm not from here, I'm from the north. But I was just wondering because the name, the, they're similar to in you know. But I was wondering what. Where did the settlers from Russia came, what part of Russia did they come to Nanilchik? That's actually a very good question. And uh, the story was, uh, to, it's a long story, but uh, th th there used to the be a long period of Russian-America time. Uh, it took much of the 19th century. And in the middle of the 19th century, some people who didn't want to go back uh, to Russia or did have resources to go back to Russia. They were allowed to right. stay here with their with their families and their families were partly of Alutic origin and that's how Dinilchik started. I think Wayne can tell Okay, and it, my other question is how many dialects in entire Russia, the whole entire Russia, are there or that you know of or study in? And what dialect did these group of Russians that came here speaking? Uh, well, there are hundreds of different dialects right. in Russia. Yeah, it's really very difficult to pinpoint everyone because sometimes there is a gradual uh, change from one village to another village. Yeah. Uh, linguists tend to artificially break them into groups. Then maybe they will have about a dozen big groups of dialects. Right. And the it seems why, that around here yeah. there were speakers from different places. Right. The reason why I asked that question, because just from where I'm from, from the North Slope, just 60 miles away from Barrow, we have different dialects. Mm -hmm. Each of our villages have different dialects. Yeah. Uh, some of our words, uh, say we say I'm a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, we ha I have to concentrate when I listen to uh, an Octubic Pass and Point Hope, mm -hmm. because they're, uh, I think, especially Point Hope, their language is more um, old, old language than mm -hmm. the yeah. area. So that's why it was important to me. Um, if I may just add to this discussion, just a few words. Uh, there are a few groups that you can somehow see through the pronunciation of the words. Because what is really good about the language, the Elchik Russian, and we see it here in this room now, is that as any uh, vibrant language, I think it's still vibrant for those right. people who speak it, and I hope it will stay like that. It has, you know, for one and the same uh, idea that you can, can have different words, like in Belov and Converto, Kazma and um, uh, Ris, and in many other instances. And it holds, also has different pronunciations. And in this case, it's especially, that's why we are sort of asking people uh, so much about their family history. Do you know your grand, uh, great grand, and where did they come from? How was his name? It's not just because we're so curious, though, so of course, it's a great story, but also because it helps to understand what areas of, you know, Russian, or what Russian dialects they might have come from. So, what, excuse us our curiosity if we ask you uh, what was exactly the, the maiden right. name of your great grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> but do they, the Russian villages here in this peninsula, do they both understand each other, or there are different dialects? Or well, I think there used to be a Kenai community of Russian speakers, but uh, because of Kenai became an American town pretty early, that uh, not too much <coughs> left of that uh, dialect, and we don't know, and there's no way to find out whether this was a different dialect or they were. Because they similar. let us led to believe that they're the old Russian speaking. They came from Russia migrating to the United States, and that's why I was up Okay, I'm, I'm now coming ah, to... It's about, uh, it's about uh, the I've uh, often wondered about making my family tree, and then you come to Russia and you learn to stop uh, walk. How, how can you go any farther than what we have over here? Family uh, tree. in Russia, I think we're prepared to come here. 
Well, I think Wade was doing a lot of genealogical work. And, uh, it really did yeah. for us, though. We get to a point, and I can possibly copy, you can tell you after you get to that point, and he's a self merger you can't go anymore. Probably it's possible, but uh, you need a professional uh, genealogist. A, a genealogist or a person who is trained to work in the archives right. and search for records from the 19th century, and if such a person, a historian, would be found, maybe he or she could do some kind of additional. Can I ask you about But I'm blueberry. coming back to... Uh, about the word blueberry. Is, I noticed that the Athabascan word for blueberry is very close to the word that we use. Who is... Glubnika? No. Kinkashka? Yeah, now who is it Athabascan or is it Russian? Kinkashka is Athabascan. It is. Yeah. Okay. I because when I was researching their dictionary, yeah. I'm thinking, did we take their word? We must so now we're coming to another another language uh, of this area, Alutic, from which a number of words came to, such as Mamai uh, for clam. Mm -hmm. oh, by the way, is Mamai any clam or certain species of clam? Mm. Just the clam. Any clam? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Ukudik for bumblebee, mm -hmm. which comes from Alutik too, mm -hmm. and Nunik for porcupine. Yeah. Can I go back to Taishi? Yes. I, I don't want to lose it in the translation, but I know from my days, and back in my mom's days, 1919, when she was born, Taishi may be a different gender, but it's not salted salmon tails. It's, it's a tail you flay out, and you dry it, you smoke it a little bit. It could be salted, but some people do, some people don't. Uh -huh. Just so we don't we don't think of it as yeah, Mirak has already written yeah. that down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll just yeah. correct that. Something like you call. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I think that the right translation would be you call. Yeah, there you go. And, then and this is the, the, the word of the mainstream Russian, yeah. but borrowed from uh, Siberian dialect. Okay, okay. Yeah. You call it more like little black or something. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, now there are. Yes. The final group of words are those that were probably uh, coined somehow in around here. Uh, some of them come from English words with some added Russian elements, like babychka, from baby. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very nice word, I really like it. What do you say for baby? Uh, very close. So it's not a broken English, if I heard correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, yeah, it's not a broken English. It's innovation. It's the language that uh, works with its own instruments. It's, its own instruments are words and parts of words like suffixes. And uses another, uh, it may use another, uh, a root from another language. So as you, uh, I said, dietichka and babichka. You see? Yeah. Yeah. And likewise, gaznik for kerosene can. It's, it's, uh, derived from the English word gas, and then the Russian suffix is added to it. What and and uh, w one interesting word is makula. We couldn't find out where it comes from and who invented this word. Do you know? I, I, I can tell you where makula comes from in my life. <laughs> We had one net was the Makula net, and that was the net we caught our kings and we sold for our own food. So we got our booze with it, so that's correct, Makula net. That's absolutely right, it's been around forever. Makula net. Makula net. is a Yes. Because when I grew up, I thought everybody had a Calador, and it was kind of a shock, but it was And Okay, uh, before you guys get too tired, we need to go, go forward. and. Uh, if you like, there are three pieces of talk by uh, three Lehman brothers. Uh, and uh, one of them was from Harry, who told us an old Russian poem uh, in his Ninilchik uh, pronunciation and, and has in a particular variety. So just go ahead. Yeah. Shall 
to na COVID bolo všetko obrčené. OK, it's, it's about a little baby chka. It was uh, out in the cold during winter time. At night, it was a, he was an orphan. And, uh, it's like a Christmas story. Yeah, it was a Christmas verse, yeah. And for me, with all the pronunciation that is specific for the Nilchik Russian, in terms of what it is about, the words, how it's said, it's a, something I would get from a classic Russian literature of 19th century. This kind of, you know... Yeah, these things were transferred from one generation to another, yeah, apparently. Like... Do you know the word sirata? <coughs> yeah. Uh -huh. and can you say sirotka? Or... Okay, now, uh, there is a story that Joe Lehman told us just a few days ago. Okay. You don't mind? I asked this one. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> uh, any, any, any kind of pie will do. But yeah, these pies today were also very good. <laughs> and uh, finally, a, another verse recorded by Wayne from his dad, Nick Lima. And this is also just a perfect style of, yeah, I would say, Russian uh, uh, 19th century, 1800s Russian literature. That's how I could get it. <laughs> Монах рожден, чтобы молиться. The monk is born to pray. Uh, the soldier for uh, being in combat all his life. Yeah. And the yeah. clerk for digging in the papers <laughs> <laughs> and the mujik to work forever. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good one. Okay, now please mirror uh -huh, okay. will continue. It doesn't make a big difference, uh -huh. but anyway. Uh, besides purely, you know, linguistic part of it like words, I don't know, rules and sounds, there is so much which wraps these words and everything and makes it a real a real language uh, because language and culture they you know go hand in hand and uh, of course I already started this talk uh, history of individual families individual people how they got here the the songs that we were singing or poems they were telling they are all making this you know uh, cradle for for the language to to rock and to be into Live. And uh, we need to keep these memories. And so it was a, with great appreciation, I think, and a big thank you to Wayne Lehman, who uh, did this Agrafena's uh, Children uh, publication where he tried to put together all the family stories. And of course, it's an available resource for those, your children, grandchildren, and descendants who would like to know about their family story, and also for researchers to be able to trace those connections between people and their their language. Also, I would like to uh, point to another you know, important member of the community who is sitting here, Bobby Ascolpa's poem, Haunting Memories. I already told her that speaking at some academic conferences related to language and culture, not necessarily even on speaking about the Nelchik Russian, I would uh, use this poem that she, she wrote and uh, published, posted on the internet, to show how, how people may value their and honor their tradition. Could you please show it? Uh, this is, uh, I, I, I will read it in a, in a second, but I would like to, just to uh, drag your attention what uh, I did. It's the poem written by Bobby. And uh, the yellow color here shows the Russian, the words of the Nilchik Russian that she inserted here. So when with the evening tide I take, is it okay if I read it? Yeah. I will probably got do it. New version. It's a, you have a new, I probably wouldn't do it in such an uh, artistic manner as you could do, but okay. When with the evening tide I take my thoughts in stride, where is the driftwood lying in the sand, forever gone, the language of the land? Where is the silence I once knew, whatever happened to the slough? 
Noonie gnawing on the bark, noisy feeling, hooting in the dark, blowing coyotes howl, well, and I, now please give me the, another slide, because I would like to talk about this word. So what I would do talking about this language, and this is just an example of how culture and memories and people get together. I would show exactly how these words relate to each other. For instance, Noonie and Taishi, we just talked about these words as being uh, the uh, big bor borrows from uh, from Alutic. Next. Now, this word, Ryabchik, Paltus, Yolka, Masla, Bulichka, these are all words belonging to the mainstream Russian, the same words we use in everyday life in Moscow. Go ahead. Uh, Pepil, Wada, uh, uh, that would be the words that have slightly different pronunciation, but they also mean the same. We, we say, we say Wada. You say Wada, so but it's one. It's all the same things. Puchka is another. It's a, a, a local, uh, a local word. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is a word for <coughs> some of the dialects. We still have to figure it out which specific dialect of Russian and what it it would meant there. But this is a nice word that all people here would know. Go ahead. Uh, some words like Gulbnika. Pobrik, Petrovsky, again, that's something Andrei talked about. Slightly different form, but uh, in Russian, but Pobrik, Pogrip, uh, Petrovsky, Petrushka in mainstream Russia. Mm -hmm. and, yes? and then the, this Siona Riba is an example of some grammar features, how, uh, <coughs> how words will com combine together in the Nilchik Russian as compared to it. So, what I wanted to show with this nice poem is that. Um, it's so good that you did it, because it shows your attitude towards language, and that's how we talk about this, these words. They are part of the context. And in conclusion, and of course we, can, we, will, uh, we, will be going to, we are going to discuss whatever you want and listen to your ideas. In conclusion, give me some information. I would like to say that you know, cultural story of every community, every family, every you know, nation, it, all, it evolves in time. It's like a, a moving a moving story, a moving line. And the Russian language of Nenilchik, it is a very precious part of world culture, also evolving in time. So it would be... So when we talk about, you know, preservation, it's, it's not the word I really like, it's like something very technical, but still, uh, maybe not preservation, maybe honoring it, it would be a better word. But by honoring this, we preserve cultural stories and memories, not just of the specific people, of, uh, as, as you guys, but of something that belongs to, to everyone, and uh, uh, especially to you and your descendants, but also to the broader community. We try to pass this down to new generations, because otherwise it will be lost, and it will be a loss not just for you guys, it will be lost for everyone, for everyone speaking Russian, everyone belonging to the Russian, universe, but also just uh, for, for world culture. So I wanted to, to put it on a high note and kind of <laughs> connect it to the, uh, the big, uh, our larger, bigger goals of uh, preserving cultural heritage. Because you, I don't have to tell it to you, you know how much language and culture go hand in hand and how important culture is in our lives, because without culture we don't know who we are, where we belong, and, and it's true for everyone, people living in big cities or in small uh, places. So thank you very much for preserving your language and for sharing it with us and for your attitude, that you under, for your understanding of how important it is. That's, I, so I would like to say thank you very much for this. Bob 
babushka toys and ser. How does it go? We have someone who can tell it. Yeah. And then what cock, what cock say? <laughs> and when she'd say that what cock, that's the part we like because it made, she was crying and we're crying, we didn't know why. But anyway, um, it's all these words that it's funny how, you know, it just brings a lot back. If you want to hear it, ask Selma to tell it. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure so. Selma knows Selma that song. Hear it. Yes, we even have a file, but I said, well, maybe on Selma who can hear it. I got to do a more than my So I started writing words I know. Starik, Staruha, Babushka, uh, you know, Kolya, uh, Sabaka. And uh, I thought, gee, I wonder how many I could song. write. But I, uh, I just stopped. I got busy doing other things. And uh, until now, the song came to me as uh, I was listening to the words up here. And I want to thank you very, very much. Thank you for coming. For coming. Let me give you some cold chocolate. Selma, what about that love song? Oh, thank you. Everybody was just want to tell you to get that word out. Uh, no, 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 no. I wanted to go to the sewer. I was so happy. I think I got to mix that little bit. I don't know. All the rest of the box is that word. I got rid of that word. I just tried to see you. But we see the fun of it. Yes, I'm going to put it in the center. Oh, was it really good? Was that your friend?